So I'm uh, here with Brad, a uh, fellow Gears team member and an uh, old time uh, Ajax hacker and he just put out this really really cool article um, that kind of wrapped up his experience building a, a little interesting Gears app and I just wanted to bring him in just to chat a little bit about it. Uh, can you introduce the, the work that you did? Sure, sure. So Gears has this uh, cool feature that kind of gives you the primitives to do a client side search engine. It has full text search, it has a local database, and so the article is around something called Pub Tool Search, which takes these features and puts them together so you can drop a full kind of a, a client side search engine into your page with a little bit of HTML, and then it cracks that open and really shows you how something like that's done. Interesting. So, what is uh, full text search? Uh -huh. So, full text search is when you take a document and you break it up into words. And you create an index that you can search over many of them very fast to sort of find matches. Um, a relational database allows you to sort of search over data, but it's not appropriate for searching over documents. So full text search gives you that ability, and Gears embeds that in the embedded database so you can put documents in, you can search over them really fast. Okay, cool. So our SQLite has that already embedded. Uh -huh. And in fact, that's out there in SQL Lightland, so you could even use it without gears. Yeah, so as a cool thing, um, Scott Hess at Google contributed that functionality <coughs> back into the SQL Lite project, which is now in SQL Lite as well as gears. Yeah, that's really cool. And so, uh, how do you actually like work with this full text index? What do you actually do like in SQL to make this mm -hmm. magic happen? Well, what's really cool is that um, so MySQL has a similar feature now as well. You sort of mark a column as text, and then you, the abstraction makes it feel like it's normal SQL. You don't have to do some other things. You insert a row with your data, and internally it's doing the indexing, it's building up an efficient representation. And then when you want to search it, there's a new magic SQL keyword called match. Cool. So you can say select where name match some regular expression, say, and it'll do the work on the index for you. Yeah, it's not quite a regular expression, but there's, you know, you could do, do different operators. You can do sort of if this and this and that, and partial matches and stuff. Cool. So um, with the pop tool search, uh, what do you have to do to kind of embed this search mm -hmm. then within your little web page, web application? Yeah. So the cool thing about pub tool search is it's both a really great set of like example code for someone that wants to use these features, and then it's also for people that don't know JavaScript as well. You just grab this open source JavaScript library, drop it into your page, and literally just give a file with a bunch of URLs that you want to have downloaded and then you just put a little div in your page with a magic ID and it will load up, it'll drop a search field in there in the background it'll download all those URLs index them and then as the user types it'll search in real time and show the results so for someone that wants to get started going literally you could probably in, in two minutes very um, cool mm -hmm. great so so yeah so you just mark up the files it downloads it you can then search on it um, throughout the article, you talk about some of like the best practices mm -hmm. that you kind of found out or you knew about and implemented yeah, here. Yeah. Um, we could chat about some of those, like uh, using the worker pool to do database stuff, yeah. things like that. So as soon as you start working with a database or, or a full text search system, you're going to hit the hard drive. And hard drives are slow. They're much slower than computer memory. So if you're, as you're working with the, with the database, you're gonna, the browser's just going to be unresponsive, especially if you're dropping lots of documents in and you're searching. So Gears Workers are a way to run code away from the browser's thread so that you can do larger operations. So in the first iteration of PubTool Search, I didn't use the workers. And I'd always been told, you know, you should use them. But I was like, okay, yeah, let sure. me see. Yeah. So I made, you know, I made the code that would download the documents and then plug them into the database and read them out. And the browser literally... For, for a list of eight documents that I actually, they're books from Project Gutenberg. So okay. as an example, <laughs> you can search over books from Gerte and things like that. Yeah. Um, it would take minutes. The browser would just freeze. I was like, oh, this idea is never going to work. And then I refactored it to use workers. So I download the documents, make a worker, hand it the document, and it would plug it in. And also for search, and the results were unbelievable. It became milliseconds. You know, download the documents and plug them in much, much faster. So, so the uh, the lesson is use workers when you're working with the database 
and when you're doing search and indexing. Interesting. So, uh, even for smaller, even for smaller data sets. So pretty much to start off with, kind of always follow the pattern. Any database access, anything, just put it in a worker. Yeah, and there's some other things along that. I mean, I think it's always good. Uh, essentially, the first thing was, was appropriate. I was doing a fast prototype. Yeah. And workers can be a little tricky to work with. Yeah, how much overhead is there really? In well, there's some tricks. Once you get the idea behind workers, they become easier. Um, but it takes a little while to wrap your, your head around them. But once you get them, they're, they're pretty straightforward. And you, and you learn some tricks to make your code more maintainable and things like that. They're a little hard to explain. Yeah without seeing the code. Yeah, interesting. So one of the other things I noticed was you used Dojo uh, mm -hmm. in the actual example code, and you kind of went through, and also, you know, it's almost as an aside, but equally interesting, talking about the different methods they're hitching and things like mm -hmm. this that really help you with JavaScript. Um, why did you use Dojo? So here's the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm in the Dojo project, and I didn't just want to use it because I wanted to use it. I initially, so there was an early release of PubTools that wasn't focused on search a few months ago. It was to help you take things, sort of static content offline. And I ended up, of course, like every project, starting to roll my, my convenience methods, my utility methods. And then PubTool search was just such a more complicated code base. It was a harder problem. But I started rolling things like hitch. You know, that just makes the code, and especially there's lots of asynchronous operations. Yeah. And I noticed that I was essentially beginning to roll the dojo core, yeah. um, things like uh, being able to define classes, because doing JavaScript prototypes are fine, but I find as you start getting more classes, they get a little te a little, little heavy. Um, so I was like, I'm just gonna use the dojo core, and the dojo core is obviously it's much smaller now, and and so I ended up grabbing that, and um, dojo now has a way to rename space the dojo thing. So I, I named it pu for pub utils. <laughs> uh, and uh, so just in case someone was using it in the page and, right. and didn't want to, I didn't want to have a collision. Yeah. Cool, cool. So um, talking about workers, um, we get asked a little bit about, you know, we've got, you know, cross domain XHR, we've got the XDR stuff from uh, Microsoft, mm -hmm. and we've got uh, within Giz, we have uh, cross origin to be able to do cross origin calls. Yeah. Where do you think these things kind of fit? Because we often see that they're actually better for different tasks. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. People don't often understand that. Well, let me explain what cross-origin workers are a little bit. So you've got a worker, and workers, the model is that they can message each other. Um, so someone in Gears came along and said, hey, why can't we have a worker that's at another domain that, that, that we instantiate, and then they can message each other in a secure way? And um, when I first saw cross-domain workers, I thought that, oh, these are going to do mashups for us, because I'm very excited about those. Uh, but I, I found that cross-domain workers are really good for a specific thing. Um, commonly in Gears, you have a local server or a database, and you want it to run in the context of another domain. So a good example of that is, let's say, let's say I'm the New York Times, and I have all my content, and I have a separate domain where I store my static stuff, JavaScript, CSS images, like static.newyorktimes.com. The local server can only cache things from the domain you're on. So there's no way to cache the static stuff. So cross-domain workers are a way to sort of start that up on static.newyorktimes.com and tell it, hey, cache all your stuff. And they're, and let's say, or let's say you want to have a centralized database and you have many domains. So cross-domain workers are really good for that, um, or for authentication, things like that. They get a little more um, awkward when you're trying to mash up third-party services. So I think that that we still need one of these proposals to, to sort of pan out. Um, but those don't replace what, what Gears needs to do, which is to be able to, to have some of the gear stuff work across domain. That's the original use case. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Well, thanks so much for yeah, coming to you. chat about this stuff. I just wanted to say that um, you can check out the blog post and then crack open the source code to really see there's a lot more best practices in there. Yeah. And. Um, We'll have a best practices document coming out really, really soon now, a lot of people's experiences. And uh, I'm excited to see how people drop this into their pages as well. Yeah, to totally. Yeah. Our local search. By the way, it's very fast when you have local search. Um, you don't have to wait for the round trip time and things like that. So. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Well, great. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. And yeah, if you have any best practices or anything with Gears, uh, let us know. Anything else you want us to talk about?